Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A Level, Chemistry Unit 5 for June 2020. This is the part 2 video. I'll put the links to the part 1 and part 3 video below in the description box. Let us begin with the first part. Question 21. This question is about electrochemical cells. The half equation for an ion 3 and 2 half cell is, we can see here, that is the equation. They say the standard electrode potential of this half cell is measured using the apparatus shown. So in this apparatus, we can see hydrogen gas comes in. We have platinum electrode. We have a solution containing hydrogen ions. And on the other side, they've given us some other information. They say the measurement is made under standard conditions. Remember, standard conditions are a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed, the temperature of 298 Kelvin, and the pressure of 100 kilopascals. So they say identify by name or formula the substances needed in the salt bridge and in the right hand half cell to measure the standard electrode potential. Salt bridge containing a solution of potassium nitrate. And then here the electrode B, of course, should be platinum. And the solution on the other side should be containing ion 3 ions as well as ion 2 ions. Moving on, the cell diagram for an electrochemical cell is we have platinum, then manganese 2 plus water, manganese 7 plus hydrogen ions. And then on the other side, they've given us other components. The key thing we have to know is this is a salt bridge. And these concentration brackets are showing you things that are in the specific half cell on one side of the arrow. So basically, we can see on one side of the arrow, Magnet 2 is going to be reacting with water, and on the other side, after the arrow, manganate is going to be reacting with the acid. So they say write the half equations for the two half cells, and hence the overall ionic equation for the reaction that occurs. State symbols are now required. Like I said already, we can see this reaction whereby that reacts with that to give us that and that on the other side. Of course, we have to include the electrons, which are five electrons. And then the other side, we have that reacting with that, to give us that and that. Now we know this is going to be a reduction reaction, so we have to put in two electrons. Now to balance this equation, we have to multiply this by two and this by five. So when we did that, the overall equation we get is going to be this one here. Two MN2 plus, plus five of that, plus 14 hydrogen ions gives us two MnO4 minus, plus five Bi3, plus seven H2O. We know the hydrogen ions were 30 here, and here there were 16, so they have to cancel out so that we have 14 on this side, which is that. Moving on. Question C says the standard electrode potential E theta for the chromium 3 chromium half cell is negative 0.74 volts. So we have chromium 3 giving us chromium solid. They say the effect on the electrode potential of changing the concentration of the ions in the half cell is calculated using this equation. They say where n is the number of electrons in the half equation, t is the temperature in Kelvin, and r is the gas constant. So we can see there are three electrons here, so this should be three. The temperature is 298 because this was carried out at standard conditions. Remember, they said standard electrode potential. Here they ask calculate the electrode potential of the half cell at 298 Kelvin when the concentration of chromium-3 ions is 0 0.0100 mol per decimeter cubed. So using this formula, I know my n is equal to 3 because we have 3 electrons. T is 298. It was carried out as standard conditions. R is 8.31. This is the gas constant. E theta is negative 0.74. And the chromium concentration is 0.01 given in the question. Substituting everything in, I got negative 0.74 plus 8.31 times 298 divided by 9600 times 3 natural log of 0.0. .0 one zero zero. So when I simplified everything, I got the answer as negative 0 0.78 volts to two significant figures. So that was the answer here. And this brings us to the end of question 21. Let us continue to question 22. Question 22. This question is about aromatic amines and amino acids. They say a synthesis of phenyl amine is shown. We can see there is nitration here. I'm writing benzene to nitrobenzene. Here we use concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid at temperatures between 50 and 60. So this is reduction using tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. So the question says benzene is converted into nitrobenzene in step one 
using a mixture of concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. The electrophile is NO2+. A student drew a mechanism for the reaction. So we can see this is the mechanism the student drew. Of course, we can see the errors here because this arrow should be pointing the other side. And we know the open ring should be facing like that. Also, we know they should be coming from the bond and not from the atom hydrogen. So we can see there are three mistakes. They say, describe the three changes needed to correct this student's mechanism. In step one, the direction of the arrow should be reversed. The arrow should come from the benzene ring towards the electrophile. It should be in this direction like that, going that way. Change two, I said in step two, the ring should open facing the carbon onto which the NO2 is attached, like you can see here. And then change three, again in step two, the arrow for the electrons returning to the ring should come from the carbon hydrogen bond, like I did here. It should come from there towards the ring. So those were the three possible changes that could be made. Moving on. In part two, they say give the reagents for step two. Of course, like I already said, use tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. That is a reduction reaction where nitrobenzene is converted into phenylamine. In part B, they say phenylamine is a base. Explain why phenylamine is a weaker base than ammonia. To explain this, I need to be able to draw. This is phenylamine. Let me try to structure it like that. NH and H like that. In phenylamine, there is a lone pair of electrons here, but this is going to be incorporated into the ring, and therefore it will not be quite available to be donated to electrophiles. While in ammonia, the structure is going to be like that. There is a lone pair that is available and is going to be easily donated for reaction, so ammonia is going to be a stronger base than phenylamine. So my explanation was, in phenylamine, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen overlaps with the delocalized electrons in the ring, increasing the electron cloud of the ring, but this decreases the electron density on the nitrogen atom, making phenylamine a weaker base, or we can say it's less able to accept protons or a proton. In ammonia, there is no overlap, so the electrons are available for donation. Moving on, here they say, State what is seen when a few drops of aqueous solution of phenylamine are added to aqueous solution containing copper 2 ions. When this occurs, a deprotonation reaction is going to occur, and the pale blue solution is going to turn into a blue precipitate, as we can see in this reaction. Two of these ligands are each going to lose a hydrogen, and therefore we will form this compound here, but there are going to be two of them because two must react in order to remove two hydrogens in total from two water ligands. So here, a pale blue solution will turn into a blue precipitate. Moving on. Azoviolate is used as a dye and an indicator. A synthesis of azoviolate from one amino 4 nitrobenzene is shown. We can see this is converted into that. Here we can use sodium nitrite and dilute hydrochloric acid. In order to form nitrous acid, but the temperature has to be controlled between 0 to 5 in order to prevent formation of phenol. So in the next step, we can see this being converted to that. So the questions are like, give the reagents and conditions for step 1. In step 1, we use sodium nitrite and HCl at 5 degrees, or you could say from 0 to 5 degrees. Down here they say, deduce the structure of the organic compound needed to produce azoviolate in step 2. So when we go back to step 2, that this structure here, like that, is what we have here, like that, and therefore, Whatever that came in must have been something like that. So it could have been a ring with two OH groups attached. So that is why you see here I drew the same structure, a ring with two OH groups attached. So this should have been the structure that was needed to form the product they are produced above. Moving on. Here they say give a reason why azoviolate exists as geometric isomers. When you go back here, we can see azoviolate has a nitrogen and nitrogen double bond. Around this, there is restricted rotation. So here I said there is restricted rotation around the nitrogen-nitrogen double bond. That is why we can say there is geometric isomerism. Phenylalanine is an amino acid that exists as optical isomers. The structure of one of the optical isomers is shown. Complete the diagram to show the other optical isomer of phenylalanine. Because optical isomers are going to be mirror images of each other, we have to draw this structure exactly as this, but as if there is a mirror here. 
So the hydrogen comes first, the two oxygens, and then the carbon. And here I brought the hydrogen five first, the six carbons, the two hydrogens, and then the carbon. And then we see the hydrogen here. And on the other side, it's going to be nitrogen first and the two hydrogens. So this is the structure you must have drawn. So this brings us to the end of question 22. Let us continue to question 23. Question 23. This equation is about some organic compounds, a mixture of methane and ethane with a total volume of 25 centimeters cubed required 65 centimeters cubed of oxygen for complete combustion. All gas volumes were measured at the same temperature and pressure. They wanted to determine the percentage by volume of methane in the mixture. So here I began by writing the individual equations. If methane is reacting with oxygen, we produce carbon dioxide and water. And this is the balanced equation for that. The more ratio here is going to be each methane will require twice the amount of oxygen. And so if the volume of methane used initially was X, then the volume of oxygen is going to be 2X. Also, for a reaction between ethane and oxygen, this is the balanced equation. And the more ratio here is going to be 1 to 7 over 2. Again, if the volume of ethane is Y, then the volume of oxygen used is going to be 7 over 2Y. Now, knowing those two facts, we can try to add them up in order to connect to the information given. Remember, they say the total volume of ethane and methane was 25. So since this is what we have denoted to be the volume of methane, and this is what we have denoted to be the volume of ethane. So X plus Y should equal to 25 because this is the total volume of the two. Also, they say 65 centimeters cubed of oxygen were needed for complete combustion, and that means 2X plus 7 over 2Y should equal to 65, as we can see here. So now we have two simultaneous equations. We have that, and we have that. And solving this simultaneous equation by elimination, we have that, and we have that, which I brought here. And aiming to solve these two simultaneous equations using the elimination method, I multiply this equation by 2 in order to be able to subtract this and get a 0. So this multiplied by 2 gave me 2x plus 2y is equal to 50, and the other, this one here, came as it was here. Now to use the elimination method, you can subtract. This becomes 0, but this becomes 2y minus 7 over 2y, and that becomes 50 minus 65. In the end, I have negative 3 over 2y is equal to negative 15, and y is equal to 10. Then, if we substitute this 10 back here, we can see that x is equal to 15. The percentage by volume of methane is going to be the volume of methane, which is 15, divided by the total volume, which is 25, times 100, and that is going to give us 60%. So that was our answer. You need to know some basic mathematics skills of solving spontaneous equations in order to solve this appropriately. Moving on. Here they say, devise a reaction scheme to convert butan to all into one amino to methabutan to all in three steps. We are trying to convert this into that, but because we see that, it means we're going to go through a route of production of a nitrile. And in order to produce a nitrile, we need to have oxidized this one to create a carbonyl compound. They say include the reagents, conditions, and equations for each of the steps, and for any oxidation or reduction, use oxygen in square brackets or hydrogen in square brackets, respectively. So in my first step, I talked about oxidation using potassium dichromate in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid, and here we heat under reflux. So the equation for this reaction is going to be the secondary alcohol reacted with an oxidizing agent to produce a ketone. And then in step two, this ketone can be reacted with HCN in the presence of KCN. So my reaction is, as we can see here, reacts with HCN in the presence of KCN, because actually this is a catalyst and we produce a hydroxy nitrile. Then this hydroxy nitrile can be reduced using the reducing agent LiAlH4 in dry ether. So the final product is going to be a CH2 and NH2 here in the place of CN. So this is our intended product, and that should be your answer. So this brings us to the end of this second video from this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.